what you think is the agenda upcoming that's going to be really important for capital markets? Now it has really uh, been confirmed that capital markets need to be used more than ever to alleviate the dependency on the banking lending. So where are we on capital markets? Is that, well, we have a reality in Europe, uh, which is that we do not have as many IPOs as we would like. And also we have a bit of a complex functioning, I would say, of the 27 member states coming together and trying to have a capital markets union. So I think it is very important uh, to look, and this is what the officials from the commission have been looking at, what are the obstacles that are preventing companies to go public? Try to see how we, they can alleviate, at least from legislation. So obviously then there are many other factors and components, but from the legislative point of view, what could be done to try to soften this process and also to try to assess the unintended consequences of current legislation. Because just to give you an example, uh, MIFID II brought the unbundling of research uh, of companies. And for instance, this is something that has been really putting some of the companies out of the radar of some of the brokers. And it was seen that, in fact, this had to be addressed. So, for instance, this is something that got um, addressed in this uh, MIFIR quick fix as part of the recovery package. So where are we is that uh, looking at what can be done to really try to steer the capital markets in Europe and try to be competitive vis-a-vis -vis other parts around the world. And for that, we have, as I said, a big mesh, uh, kind of battery of measures that are put in place to really try to put this all together. So you mentioned this problem. I mean, the dichotomy very roughly is essentially that 80% of the commercial economy of the United States of America tends to be funded by effectively commercial instruments, equity, debt, and so on, and public exchanges. The problem is in Europe, it's exactly the opposite way around. The banks are doing about 80% of it, the public markets are doing about 20. And that's obviously a problem. And it's a problem that's been there since long before the European Economic Commission, let alone the EC or the EU. But I mean, so far, it seems to me, looking from the outside, we've had what? A capital markets union process that's been talked about or in process for the better part of a decade. Progress seems to have been painfully slow. Indeed, uh, progress is uh, slow. Cannot disagree with that. But it's true that these things take time. And uh, obviously, I mean, when we talk about uh, legislation at European level with the different phases that it needs to pass on, it really takes time. However, what I think it is uh, very relevant right now is what is being proposed currently, because even though it takes time, I think if the measures that are being discussed are the good ones, then okay, we can wait because we know that the end will be very good. What I think is more concerning is to see, for instance, that while we have a bit of a struggle uh, bringing companies into capital markets, we also see that there are a quite uh, significant levels of dark trading in Europe. So mm -hmm. I think that all this together kind of puts the question out like, okay, what we need to do? And for instance, now with the Capital Markets Union, as I said, this MIFIR review that belongs to the Capital Markets Union package, we feel that has been from the proposal point of view, because this is not finished, has been a bit of a missed opportunity. So I think the Capital Markets Union itself is a great initiative. It's very much needed. Yes, it takes time, but hopefully once all the different measures will be in place, normally we should expect an improvement. But what is, is very, very important is that the measures that are being discussed are the right ones. And for instance, when now I see, we already saw it from the leaked document, but um, now it has been confirmed with the adopted package that uh, still there is no enough ambition to tackle the transparency of the trading landscape. This is why we need to probably continue working very hard on that. Rosa, you said crypto and blockchain and I got very excited. We know regulation is key. How do you feel Brussels views digital assets? And do you think Europe will get left behind the rest of the world as we embrace the brave new digital crypto revolution? Yeah, well, I think that Brussels uh, is really taking quite seriously the digital transition and uh, they are trying not to be too prescriptive uh, when it comes to, to these type of assets, because they, of course, are fully aware that they are moving really fast and that we really need to kind of be a little bit accommodative of what the changes will be. At the same time, I think that it is very important 
to keep in mind that uh, whatever happens uh, with crypto in the future, and let's see where this is going to take us, it's very important that it takes us to a much more democratic system, no? in the sense that many more people can really be part of capital markets and many more people can really benefit from that. So I think it very much links to the uh, kind of um, technology as well from capital markets itself and how this is embraced there. It is true that there are other jurisdictions that are a little bit more advanced into this, but I am quite confident that I think that regulation does not try to kill things before they kind of give the success of their potential.